Okay, so that's the parable of the mustard seed. What about the next parable? Again, uh, this is this one's commonly referred to as the woman and the leaven, or just the parable of the leaven. It's a short one, but it's important. In verse 33, it says, He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till it was all leavened. All right, let's pause there. Once again, where's the twist in this parable? Where's the unexpected part of this parable? Well, it's in the very first line. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven. All right, if you were a first century Jew um, and you knew the Old Testament, you would know that in the Old Testament, leaven, which is another word for yeast, is something that is considered unclean. It's frequently a symbol of being unclean. So when you wanted to celebrate the Passover meal, you had to eat bread without leaven, bread that had not had yeast mixed into it to make the dough rise. It was a kind of symbol of purification. You can even look at some of the other teachings of Jesus. Uh, for example, in Matthew chapter 16, Jesus says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. So the leaven of the Pharisees is their teaching and their hypocrisy. So it's a symbol of uncleanness. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, St. Paul does the same thing. He says, cleanse out the old leaven and bring in righteousness and holiness. So he uses leaven as a symbol for sin. So that's, that's a weird thing for Jesus to do, <laughs> to, say, to take a, something that was known as being unclean and saying the kingdom of God's like that, right? Which, by the way, just as a kind of uh, scientific side note, it's interesting that the Jews regarded leaven as unclean uh, uh, because as contemporary science has shown us, what yeast is, is it's a small microorganism, it's a small bacteria, and what it does, the way it makes bread rise, is the, the, the yeast, the microorganism, gets into the, the bread and it eats all the sugars, and when it eats the sugars, it, for lack of a better word, well, let me just, it produces gas. And the carbon dioxide that the, the little organisms emit um, make bubbles, and the bubbles cause the bread to rise. So you could see how uh, even contemporary science would show there's a certain uh, natural logic to considering yeast to be unclean. Well, in antiquity, that was the kind of standard association with yeast. It was unclean. So when Jesus says that heaven is like leaven, that would just, people would be, again, scratching their heads. What is this guy talking about? Kingdoms like leaven. Uh, the other element here that's interesting is that the woman takes the leaven she hides it in three measures of meal, which is about 50 pounds, okay? It's a big, it's a lot of, lot of meal. And even just a little leaven leavens this whole lump, okay? So what's the, what's the meaning of this parable? Well, again, I think it's very similar to the mustard seed, that the kingdom starts out really small, like a little bit of leaven, but it's powerful and it's transformative. And it, it, just a little bit of leaven is able to cause the three measures of meal to rise, right? And to become this great loaf of bread. Kind of like the mustard seed starts small and then becomes a great bush. But it also shows that there's something mysterious about the way the kingdom grows. Especially in ancient times, too. They wouldn't have had the science behind it. They would have known how and why if you take some of this yeast and you put it into bread dough, it's going to make it rise. It's mysterious, right? You take the dough off and you put it in the dark, too, to order to let it rise. And then you come back and then sure enough, there it has risen, right? So there's a kind of mystery there. And I think that's what Jesus is getting at, too, that the kingdom is not what you expect. It's mysterious. It starts out small, but it ends great. And of course, there may be a Eucharistic image there as well. Every time you see bread... Bread's going to play a key role in Jesus' mission and message when you get to the Last Supper and the institution of the Eucharist. The next few verses here are important because Jesus once again gives us an insight into the parables when he says this. All this Jesus said to the crowds in parables. Indeed, he said nothing to them without a parable. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter what has been hidden since the foundation of the world. All right, pause there for just a second. This is very similar to what we saw last week uh, with the beginning of the discourse, that the parables are about revealing hidden mysteries. Jesus is leading the disciples into the mysteries of the kingdom. 
to the supernatural nature of the kingdom, to the invisible character of the kingdom. That it's like yeast that grows and spreads in the dark. You can't see it. You don't understand why and how it does, and yet it does. Uh, and by the way, from that, he's quoting Psalm 78, verse 2. So he's drawing on one of the passages from the psalm to show that he's speaking in these mushalim, these parables, these riddles, in order to unveil these mysteries that have been hidden since the foundation of the world.